Good morning or good afternoon, whatever the case may be. Ann and I would like to say Happy Easter to each of you, our friends, this morning. And at the same time, I'd like to talk about Easter for about 11 minutes today. I was just thinking, we celebrate Mother's Day in honor of our mothers. We celebrate Father's Day in honor of our father along with 11 other holidays throughout the year, not including 11 federal holidays as well. We celebrate a lot of holidays. Thousands throughout the world celebrate various religious holidays as well. For example, Advent Sunday, All Saints Day, Ascension Day, Christmas Day, Easter Day, Good Friday, Lent and Ash Wednesday. I personally join in with all Christians who celebrate some of these events. Easter being one of them. I do view Easter as the most important celebration of them all. And here's why. Like thousands of Christians, including myself, we celebrate Easter Sunday as the day of Jesus Christ's resurrection from the dead, which is recorded in the New Testament of the Christian Bible. According to the Gospel of John in the New Testament, Mary Magdalene went to Jesus' tomb after he was buried and found that the tomb was empty. I'd like to read about this event today, and I'll be reading from John chapter 20 and beginning in verses 1. So if you have your Bibles, if you will, turn with me to John chapter 20, beginning in verse 1. It's recorded, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and we know who that was, that was John, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So here, Mary shows up at the tomb, and Jesus is gone. She went to Simon Peter and John, told them about it. So Peter and the other disciple, which was John, started running for the tomb. Notice, both of them were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. So John outran Peter. He must have been pretty swift on his feet, don't you think? <laughs> yes, he was. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. So John didn't go into the tomb, but he just looked at the linens lying there. And then Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. So Peter shows up and he goes inside. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been uh, around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who was John, who had reached the tomb, finally also went inside. So John comes along, and he goes inside, too. Here's what it says about John. He saw and believed. So when John saw that Jesus had risen from the dead, he believed as well. They, talking about both Peter and John, did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Wow. That's interesting. John walked beside Jesus all along the way. And he still didn't understand. 
he had to rise from the dead. Wow. Very interesting. But notice what happened next. Then the disciples went back to their homes as Peter and John went back home. And Mary stood outside the tomb crying. What a scene. What a sad scene. And later on, Jesus appears to his disciples. And then Jesus appears to Thomas, old dad and Thomas. Thomas who just refused to believe that he had risen from the dead until Jesus told him. He said, hey, put your, put your finger in, in, my, in my side with a sword where I've been pierced with my sword. And then notice what uh, Thomas said after he did that. In verse 28, Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. And notice what Jesus told Thomas. And Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Wow. We're all blessed. All of us who believe and not seen Jesus are blessed. That's what Jesus is saying. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Then it goes on to say, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. Did you know everything that Jesus did is not recorded in the Bible? I know that because that's what it says. It says, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. And finally, it says in verse 31, But these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Notice again what he says. But these things are written. What things? The things that I just told you about. The things that I told you about Peter and John and Thomas and Jesus rising from the dead. These things are, are written for a reason so that uh, we can believe in the Son of God and that by believing we may have life in his name. Yes, there's a purpose for all of this. There's a purpose for Jesus' death and his resurrection on the cross from, from, the death, from his death on the cross. Easter is about the Savior of the world who died and arose so we believe he is the Son of God and that by believing we can have life through his name. So that's why thousands of Christians celebrate Easter. But what does Easter really mean to you? What does it mean to me? It means that my sins have been forgiven through the death and resurrection of Christ on the cross. That's what it means to me. In John 19 and verse 30, the last words that Jesus spoke before his death was, It is finished. What was, what was finished? You know, there was a time before his death that all things were not finished. Luke 12, verses 50, before Jesus' death and resurrection, it, it was not finished. Not, it was not complete. Jesus said, but I have a baptism to undergo. And how distressed I am until it's complete. Luke 12, verses 50. You know, before his death on the cross, he knew he was about to undergo that for us. He knew the suffering that he had to endure. He was distressed over the thought that he knew he had to die so that you and I could be forgiven of our sins. Yes, there was a time in Jesus' life and God's plan was not finished. But there was a time when all things were finished. 
when Jesus actually became the target of God's wrath and judgment of sin. When he who knew no sin became sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. As Paul told the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 5 verses 21, said, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So what is Easter all about? It's about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's about showing our respect for the one who suffered on the cross for our sins. It's about the hope we have through his death and his resurrection. Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ our Lord. If you will, in closing, will you join me in a word of prayer? But my Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for us. Thank you for raising Jesus from the dead so that we too can believe in him as your Son and our Savior. We ask you today to please not forget us in our distress. As a song we often sing, we need thee every hour of the day. Precious Lord, how we need thee every hour. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's through his name that we pray. Amen. Anna and I pray for you all this morning that God will bless you with good health until this crisis is over. I hope you enjoyed the lesson for today. Enjoy being with your family. And may God bless and keep each one of you safe.